Welcome to Bible 360 Galatians. The Christian faith had its origins in the God of Israel. However, Jesus and the apostles preached Jesus as the only way to salvation. No longer was a positive relationship with God limited to those who were circumcised and committed to obeying all the regulations given to Moses at Mount Sinai. Salvation came through trusting in Jesus, following him, and repenting. By the time Galatians is written, there are as many Gentile followers of Jesus as Jewish. Paul has established these Galatian churches. However, after Paul moved on, some Jewish Christians began demanding Gentile Christians be circumcised and follow the Torah regulations to really make God happy. Paul is outraged. After a perfunctory greeting, Paul pretty much says, you guys have lost your mind and you've lost the gospel in the process. There's only one gospel and I don't care who told you differently. No man or angel even has the authority to change the gospel because it's God's gospel and our only way to salvation. I used to be the number one opponent of Jesus in the way. However, Jesus appeared to convert me. Why? So that I might preach the gospel to you Gentiles. The gospel of Jesus has set you free from sin and condemnation that inevitably comes through the law. So why are you trying to be slaves again? Those Judaizers, those trying to re-mandate Torah observation, they were falsely claiming that the original apostle of Jesus had told them this step was necessary. Paul replies, in the first place, I didn't need the apostles' permission to preach the gospel. Jesus sent me. But it's a moot point because the apostles affirmed my ministry. They wanted me to preach. The apostles are not the ultimate authority, though. Jesus is. Peter did waver on this issue at one point and began favoring Jewish Christians and stopped fellowshipping with Gentile Christians. But I publicly rebuked him because he was wrong. And Peter accepted this rebuke. If Peter, an apostle, listened when I rebuked him on this issue, you should too. It doesn't matter whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, we can all see we break the law. It's only through faith that we can be saved. We've all been condemned by the law, but since we have been crucified with Christ, there's no longer any condemnation. Now I can stand before God, not because of my deeds, but because of faith in Christ. Think back for a minute, guys. The account of Jesus crucified is what inspired you to believe in the first place. And after you believed, that's when you received the Holy Spirit. None of these things happened to you Gentiles, when you, after you followed the law, they happened before when you were simply living by faith. Even the very law itself makes this clear. It proclaims that a curse is upon anyone who fails at any point in the law. But Jesus redeemed us by being associated with sinners in his crucifixion and associating us with him in his resurrection. Jesus was crucified, Paul says here, to fulfill God's promises to Abraham to be the father of many nations. In fact, Jesus is the true promised child of Abraham. Abraham was considered the father of the nation and religion, included by Paul's opponents here. Yet Abraham was a man of faith. As, Gen as Genesis itself says, as Abraham's belief is the reason he was blessed. Remember, this promise came to Abraham before he was circumcised and long before Moses had received the Torah. Don't you see then that God's promises and faith in them, they are what matter the most. The laws of Moses were certainly necessary for this person, purpose. Being sinners, the law had to babysit us so we didn't destroy ourselves or others until Christ came. But now that Christ has come, we no longer need a babysitter to protect us because we have graduated to a new and better way of living, trusting in Jesus. We're not children of the law. It was simply our guardian. Rather, we are children of God calling him daddy. So why return to slavery? Now that we have Jesus and follow him, we no longer need to find our identity in rules or perfection. We find our identity by being identified with Christ and included in his crucifixion. Paul pleads with the Galatians, look, I've only ever supported you, not wronged or stolen from you. At least listen to me because I love you. Look at my opponents and you'll see they're taking advantage of you. Being included in Jesus and trusting in him is all that counts. Male or female, rich or poor, Gentile or Jew, what matters is faith in Jesus, not our status, gender, or position. Paul returns to the story of Abraham and the child, God's child of promise. When Abraham tried to fulfill God's promise by his own strength, he conceived Ishmael through Hagar, but this was a mistake. In fact, Ishmael was eventually kicked out when he became a threat to the child of the promise. Turning the tables, Paul says that the laws of Moses are like Hagar and Ishmael. The child of the promise, Jesus, is the heavenly Jerusalem, and those included in him who are born of God connected to the Father through faith. You see, it's never depended upon human strength or effort. It was a lesson that Abram ha had to learn, and you Galatians should learn it too. Don't try being righteous by being circumcised or attempting to obey the Torah. You won't add to your faith, you'll destroy it. 
It can't be Jesus plus anything else. It's got to be Jesus alone. If you wonder what the next step should be, simply walk in step with the Spirit. How? Well, it's obvious what is opposed to God's will, sexual immorality, hatred, drunkenness, rage, things like that. God doesn't want you to be wicked, but the fruit of the Spirit is also obvious as well. Love, peace, patience, kindness, self-control. Don't fool yourselves. You don't indulge in your flesh. Rather, go in accord with the Spirit and aim towards those fruits of the Spirit. Focus on doing good to one another and especially towards fellow Christians. Anything that makes one set of Christians better than another is bunk. Christ called us to work together, not to envy and claw at one another. If someone does make a mistake, you should restore them as gently as you can. Worry about checking your own actions and motives more than comparing yourselves with others. We lay our claim to salvation not upon anything we have done. Instead, we boast in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to us and we to the world.